across the Illawarra, Shoalhaven and Southern Highlands. This is ABC Illawarra. And back to that riddle. What do a major bank, an Indian steel magnate and a Tarmore mine all have in common? And the answer is this cloud of uncertainty hanging over it all, uh, including, as uh, we heard from Anthony Albanese, 6,000 workers, including Wyala. Uh, and the name Sanjeev Gupta, you know his company, GFG Alliance. They own Tarmore Mine. He owns a lot of things, very uh, busy uh, businessman. Uh, but the coal from Tarmore Mine is used in the Wyala Steelworks in South Australia, which Gupta also purchased in 2017 on a little bit of a, a spree that he went on. Uh, but a claim has been filed in the New South Wales Supreme Court by Citibank to wind up Sanjeev Gupta's Australian operations. And it comes after, this happened a month ago, the collapse of major lender Greensill, which is owned and operated, or owned by Queensland-born billionaire Lex Greensill. So if Mr Gupta's Australian empire is broken up, what will happen to the Tarmore Colliery? Well, independent financial analyst Martin North may have the answer. We spoke to him last month when this all first came to light and we join uh, Martin now. Hello there. Hello, Lindsay. Okay, so when we spoke to you last month, you kind of explained what you thought was happening with Greensill. What, uh, Mr Gupta conceded GFG had been too dependent on Greensill. What has been the effect uh, of all that on Mr Gupta's business since then? Uh, well, of course, the real issue is that the uh, financing arrangements which were in place fell apart. And uh, more importantly, um, I think of it like a sole series of Russian dolls, right? Mm. So you've got the, the local businesses at the heart, and those local businesses are probably doing okay because, of course, the steel price is quite high, mm. and they've done quite a lot of re-engineering and restructuring, but they are part of the Australian uh, element uh, of uh, GFG, which is part of the global um, alliance of GFG, which was funded by Greensill. Mm. Greensill was issuing bonds, uh, which Credit Suisse were actually involved in, and basically Credit Suisse got into difficulty. They therefore cr created this legal action, which is via Citigroup, which has come back to oh. haunt the, the local businesses. So right? this so, is why Citibank, Citigroup is involved. It's Credit Suisse that have put the uh, the pressure on Greensills to get some money back. Yeah, so Credit Suisse, unfortunately, not only have got caught up with Greensill, they also got up with Archegos, which is the other, the, you know, the, the US issue as well. So they've got some big right. financial issues themselves. Did they, themselves. I thought there was like heaps of, uh, you know, financial companies and lenders around. It seems that this is a very thin funnel that's going to Greensills and then to this one it, company. And well, the there, there are there, there are a series of structural questions. Remember, this is all privately owned mm. and managed, so That's there's right. very little disclosure, mm. so it's not clear. But it seems to be that the bondholders, which were actually uh, essentially to do with the Greensill um, financing, mm. uh, are basically saying, we want those cash flows, those cash flows come from those um, GFG businesses, including the local businesses here and if we can't get them then we're going to put the local businesses into um, effectively administration now of course it's not the first time that that's happened um, the difficulty is here and, and you know we should be very clear those local businesses I think are still legitimate businesses we need them in Australia we need the local manufacturing and I think Albany is dead right there but you've got this international you know, network of wheels within wheels, dolls within dolls, and all these financing structures that basically are making it very complicated. And the danger is that people effectively are making macro decisions internationally rather than thinking about the local businesses. And that's the concern I would have. So even though you have steel and coal, profitable assets, what would be uh, the benefits of uh, making those companies go out of business? There would be far less chance of getting any money back. Well, essentially, there will be some assets that potentially could right. be um, grabbed. The issue is, of course, that uh, people like Credit Suisse need to try and grab whatever assets they can at whatever the value they can. Now, I know that the um, uh, people who are involved in, the, in basically thinking about liquidation are saying, we want to try and run the business, we want to try and trade through it, mm. which is good news. Mm. But, of course, nobody knows. So there's going to be a lot of uncertainty. I think the 6th of May is going to be a critical hearing date when we will know more about what the potential options may be so at one end of the spectrum everything might go perfectly well and by the way we know that um, uh, the GFG is trying to get alternative financing in place and in fact they were trying to negotiate to hold off 
all this action while they renegotiate alternative finance structures haven't happened so far. May mm. happen, may not happen. It's been a Remember, month, though. Does it normally take that long yeah, to renegotiate? No, I think I think this just shows the complexity. Remember, mm. of course, you've got businesses not here in just Australia, but yeah. in the UK and all around the world, and they're all interconnected with each other. And we also know that even Greenfield is not clear because the Australian um, business and uh, the, the uh, bank that's actually called Greenfield in Germany have got financial relationships too. So this is like spaghetti, frankly, mm. spaghetti everywhere. It is getting everywhere. Now, the GFG Alliance has said it will vigorously defend any legal proceedings. Uh, do you think the company mm. has a chance against the banks in court? Well, the interesting question is, what is the direct relationship between the local businesses and you know Credit Suisse and therefore mm. Citigroup. That's going to be the interesting question because there's, there's a whole series of steps, one to one to one to one, right? And so the question is, are they going to be able to prove the direct links and therefore have a legitimate claim on the local businesses, or are the local businesses able, able to say, well, it's nothing to do with us. It's uh, you know it's head office or, or it's, the, mm. it's the guys overseas. I mean, this is going to get the only people who are going to win here are lawyers. Frankly, this is going to get horribly <laughs> complicated. Um, and I guess there are at the other end of the. Chain or 6,000 employees at Tarmore and mm. Wyala, as, as you said, performing well. Positive cash flow, things are doing well. Uh, the federal opposition is urging the Commonwealth to consider safeguards for these workers. Do you think that's a sensible idea? Well, we certainly need local steel production. If, if anything, what we learned from COVID and the pandemic was we need local capability, not just rely on international capability. So we have to find a way of being able to get these local businesses continue to, to provide the manufacturing capability we need in Australia. Absolutely clear. The question is, what's the best way to do that? Can you leave it to the private sector? Can you leave it to the markets? Or you, do you need some sort of intervention to be able to actually safeguard that? That, for me, is the conversation that needs to happen. Not sure, of course, the timing of it, whether they'll wait to after the 6th of May um, or whether they should be starting those conversations now. But the danger that I see is that as, as the international you know, things happen over somewhere else, we lose sight of those 6,000 mm. people and the local businesses. That's where the focus should be. Yeah, well, uh, the Minister for Energy and Emissions Reduction, Angus Taylor, has uh, provided a statement. He says, GFG Alliance is a significant employer here in Australia with a strong performance record. Locally, the Tarmore Coking Mine is well-established and successful business, employing hundreds of local workers. I've always been a supporter of the mine, and as a major employer, I know it's incredibly important to families and businesses in the Tarmore community. Of course, Angus Taylor, the member for Hume as well. I am watching this matter closely and urge workers and the community to remain calm as we better understand the situation as it unfolds. I will do all that it can, I can to ensure the community is supported during this period of uncertainty. So uh, at least Angus, Angus Taylor is keeping an eye on, uh, on the people at the end of this pipe. So that's <laughs> that makes you feel a whole lot better. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, I guess we, uh, the, yeah, whatever happens is happening on, as you said, on a macro level. So uh, yeah. uh, we will have to wait and see. It's interesting, though. We spoke to you, I think it was the 10th of March. Now we're here uh, the 7th of April. And another month later, 6th of May is the next date. So uh, just, just put a pencil in your diary, Martin. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be back on if there's more to talk about. I'm very I'm happy sure to there help. Is. Thank you so much. Great, always great to talk to you, Martin. Cheers. Good to talk to you. Cheers. Martin North, their independent financial analyst, trying to make sense of this spaghetti of uh, financial uh, financial wires going all over the world uh, and ending up at the Tarmore Mine via GFG and Sanjeev Gupta.